Today I'm talking trips, texts, and Today I'm talking text, trips. Today I'm talking trips, text, and Today I'm talking tech, tips, and tricks for techless structures. Hello and welcome to C.S. Wilson Draws. I'm C.S. Wilson and today is the first Tecla Tech Talk that I've had on this channel. This is basically just a few odds and ends I've had laying around that I decided to lump into this one video. The only thing that they all have in common is that they're about Tecla structures, for the most part. Anyway, let's dive into it. As I'm sure you're all aware, or maybe not, version 2017 is out of the beta stage and into the RC or release candidate stage. This can be obtained through the Tecla Download website with a valid maintenance agreement, of course. Now, if you participated in the user feedback program for 2017, then most of the new features and improvements aren't going to be much of a surprise. But if you didn't participate, then I have a rundown of a few that I found particularly exciting, at least to me. Now, full disclosure, Tecla Structures 2017 is still in its pre-release phase. So these items may or may not be included in the final release. But let's hope they keep them in, as I have become particularly fond of them. First thing to note is the contextual toolbar, which if you watched my last video, you know I'm, I'm a big fan of. It's getting improved with things like being able to activate view filters, add your own macros and UDAs, and also tab between the different fields and buttons on the toolbar. That's awesome. Direct modification has gotten several modifications of its own. Most notable, the ability to precision input a distance when moving handles. There's a new snap setting called ortho angles, which snaps to whichever angles you have set whenever you have ortho mode active. Plus they've moved the snap settings to a more logical place in the file menu, right here with the settings. Moving on to the drawing editor, there were a few things there that caught my eye as well. Improved drawing performance, which involves several facets, cloning being the one I was most interested in. Although I haven't had an opportunity to adequately test this, it was really pretty good in 2016, so I'm curious to see how they were able to improve it. You can now display inch marks and fractions for dimensions. This one, for me, was a long-awaited and very much appreciated improvement. There are more cover-up options now, which include the polygon and polyline in addition to the standard rectangle and line. You can also refine and modify the shapes a little easier. It works similar to direct modification in the model editor. There's actually several things that have been added or improved in the new 2017 version. I'll leave a link in the description below that lists all the new stuff for those who are interested. I suggest you go check out version 2017 since there are significant differences between that and previous versions of Tecla structures. I believe that version 2016 was a huge step in the right direction for Tecla structures, and this new version 2017 is another big step on that same path. Let's just say I'm really anxious to start using the new version, for real. So the next little tech nugget that I have involves phases. I must say, or actually continue to say, that phases are one of the best ways to keep your model organized and also help with other commands and tasks that you use in your everyday endeavors with Tecla structures. But there's another neat little feature that they offer, and it's found when you export your model to Tecla's BIM site viewer. Now, this is nothing new, but if you're not familiar with it, BIM site is a model viewing program for Tecla structures but it can also display IFC models from other 3D BIM softwares as well. The unique thing about publishing a Tecla Structures model to BIM site is that you can choose to split by phases by putting a check in this box right here. And then the individual phases will be exported separately and then merged back together to form the TBP file. When viewed using BIM site, this will show those individual phases in a list on the left side of the screen. From here they can be selected or turned off and on. You can change the color or even change its position, rotation, and scale. 
As a common practice, I normally include these TBP files in my final project distribution, and they're a big hit with just about everyone. Most of the companies that I do work for don't really use BIM site to extract materials or collaborate with other trades. Instead, they mainly use it to view the model and see the project as a whole, or in some cases, as individual parts. By using the phases to separate out different areas or to itemize different parts of the structure just makes it easier and more convenient for everyone. What's even more appealing is that Tecla's BIM site is completely free to download and use. At least it was free at the time of this episode. All of this functionality has been around for a while, but I don't really see all that much chatter about it in the forums, so it makes me wonder how many actually know about it. It's certainly something you should be using if you're not already. On the subject of how-to, I was asked in a somewhat recent video where the grading came from that I used in that particular model. And in that particular model, the grading was made by me. I make my own grading from scratch. Now, back in the day, and by the day I mean about a year ago, I used to use the plate profile or contour plate in order to depict grading in my models. I still do that in some cases where I just need to show a representation of the grading, like existing grading or grading that's going to be detailed and provided by the grading manufacturer. So I really only use highly detailed grading when I'm providing the shop drawings for it. And making it is actually pretty simple, albeit a bit time consuming, depending on how deep you want to get into it. To start with, you'll need some data. A pretty simple Google search will yield all sorts of grading information. It's probably best to stick with manufacturer's data since that will most likely be more accurate. When you have your dimensions, create a new model and draw a grading panel that is the largest width that you're going to want. I use plate profiles for the bearing bars and a round bar or rod profiles for the crossbars and locate those at the top of the bearing bars. Make sure that the crossbar spaces are centered in the length and that the panel is at 0, 0, 0 in your model. Then select all, go to File, Export, and click on SketchUp. I like to use the SketchUp export because it provides the best and most complete output. Plus I seem to have fewer problems importing SketchUp models into Tecla. In the Advanced tab, put a check next to Parts and then go back to Parameters and choose a file name. The file name I use includes the type of grading, the depth, and the number of bearing bars. Finally, click Create Selected to create the SKP file. Now, the bearing bar that is farthest away from the model origin can be deleted and Fit Part In can be used to chop off all the crossbars flush with the outside edge of the bearing bar. You can also use line cut or pull them back manually, whatever you're most comfortable with. Then select all again and repeat the export process, except remember to change the name of the file, for example, by changing the number of bearing bars, so you don't overwrite the last one. Continue this until you have all the grading widths you want. To insert the grading into your model, hold down the shift key and select create item. I have settings saved for grading, so I'll load those. For the shape, Click on the Select button, then Import and Navigate to where you saved your grading, and select the file. If the solidity reports as solid, then all is well. Select the shape you want and click on OK. The rest of the properties are pretty standard and work the same way as any other entity. You can use the Move and Copy commands as well as the Polygon Cut and Line Cut to manipulate the grading. And that's how I do it. So that's going to wrap up this episode of Tecla Tech Talks and Tips and Tricks, and I need to work on that title. <laughs> anyway, I hope you found it informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have some kind of Tecla Structures tip, trick, or some kind of tech, leave it in the comments below. If you like, you can leave me a message on the Tecla forum, too. I hang out there a lot as well. And as always, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Content is added periodically. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.